My dear wife went to the hospital not long ago. She left a note behind for the children. Dear children, do not let Daddy touch the microwave. <laughs> Followed by a comma or the stove, <laughs> or the dishwasher, <laughs> or the dryer. I'm embarrassed to add any more to that list. <laughs> when I was appointed president of the Church, I said, I'll take one assignment to myself. I'll be the advisor to the Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> I'm very proud of my choir. <laughs> my sweet Frances, she went to the hospital. She lay in a coma for about 27 days. I sat by her side. She never moved a muscle. And then one day, she opened her eyes. I set a speed record in getting to her side. And I gave her a kiss and a hug. And I said, you're back. I love you. And she said, I love you too, Tom. But we're in serious trouble. I thought, what do you know about trouble, Francis? <laughs> she said, I forgot to mail in our fourth quarter income tax payment. <laughs> I said to her, Francis, if you had said that before you extended a kiss to me and told me you love me, I might have left you here. <laughs> My mother once said of me, Tommy, I'm very proud of all that you've done, but I have one comment to make to you. You should have stayed with the piano. <laughs> <laughs> the first day I saw Frances, I knew I'd found the right one. I went to her home to call on her. She introduced me, and her father said, Monson, that's a Swedish name, isn't it? I said, yes. He said, good. Then he went in and brought out a picture from the Bureau of two missionaries with their top hats and their book, copies of the Book of Mormon. Are you related to this Monson, he said? Elias Monson. I said, yes. He's my grandfather's brother. He, too, was a missionary in Sweden, and her father wept. He wept easily. He said he and his companion were the missionaries who taught the gospel to my mother and my father and all of my brothers and sisters and to me. And then he kissed me on the cheek, and then her mother cried. And she kissed me on the other cheek. <laughs> and then I looked around for Francis. <laughs> and then she said, I'll go get my coat. <laughs> I was in a meeting once. When the speaker stood at the pulpit and never seen an audience like this, he looked left, he looked right, and said thank you and sat down. <laughs> he left all the time to me. Just over a year ago, I was interviewed by the Church News prior to my birthday. The reporter asked what I would consider the ideal gift that members worldwide could give to me. I replied, 
Find someone who's having a hard time or is ill or lonely and do something for him or her. I was overwhelmed when this year for my birthday I received hundreds of cards and letters from members of the Church around the world telling me how they had fulfilled that birthday wish. One very creative primary sent a large jar containing hundreds of what they called warm fuzzies. <laughs> I wouldn't have known what a warm fuzzy was. <laughs> I thought of an experience I had some years ago while attending a state conference. During the general session, I observed a young boy sitting with his family on the front row of the state center. I was seated on the stand. As the meeting progressed, I began to notice that if I crossed one leg over the other, the young boy would do the same thing. If I reversed the motion and crossed the other leg, he would follow suit. I would put my hands in my lap, and he would do the same. I rested my chin in my hand, and he also did so. Whatever I did, he would imitate my actions. This continued until the time approached for me to address the congregation. I decided to put him to the test. <laughs> I looked squarely at him, certain I had his attention, and then I wiggled my ears. My wife told me not to say that. <laughs> he made a vain attempt to do the same, but I had him. 